It's a real pleasure uh, to be here this morning and today with you um, on this, uh, with this great agenda and with this um, truly um, amazing time that we're in in trying to, to grow the internet and make sure that the internet really does work to the benefit of all people. Uh, at the Internet Society, uh, we, as Shernan uh, said earlier, we, we look at the internet as a global system and we try to look at the policies and the technologies and the development strategies that are needed to make sure that this is really a tool that benefits everybody around the world. And we know that we have a lot of work that needs to be done. And it's chapters like the one that was just formed here in the Dominican Republic that will make an enormous difference in bringing the power of all of the stakeholders in a local community to bear on solving the challenges, whether they be related to security or access or affordability or local content. There's a lot to be done, and the only way that we get there is if we work together. So I want to first congratulate and welcome the new uh, chapter of the Internet Society uh, of the Dominican Republic and congratulate the efforts of Aparo and Wanda who've, uh, has, as uh, Aparo said, it's been two years of effort and, and commitment and we at the Global Internet Society are thrilled to have a local community here in the Dominican Republic that's working on these issues. In speaking to um, uh, Wanda and Aparo yesterday, uh, the comment was made that the chapter is really going to focus on internet governance and focus on how to build capacity of the local community to be more active and um, to help uh, address the internet governance issues both locally and abroad. So what I thought I would do today is speak a little bit about the global context of internet governance and hopefully um, begin the dialogue that I know will continue throughout the day about how that global context affects the work that you're doing here locally. Um, let's see, so if this, am I on? No, there we go. Aha. So the Internet Society's mission and vision is to promote the open development, evolution, and use of the Internet for the benefit of all people throughout the world. The local chapter that's just uh, been chartered here in the Dominican Republic is part of that global vision. And the internet governance debate, um, as we approach it, we approach it through the lens of this vision. What can we do to make sure that the internet is available, open, um, and for the benefit of all people? A couple priorities that we see in terms of the global internet, um, there, these are diverse challenges, right? The internet is diverse as it's three billion users. But there are some key challenges that we at the Internet Society are very focused on. One is this concept that the minister raised earlier of how do we ensure that stakeholders are involved in the development of the internet? How do we ensure that the, the development processes that we have in mind benefit end users from all parts of the society. We need to ensure that the resiliency and robustness of the internet uh, is in place, that the internet can withstand the security challenges that we all read about in the newspapers every day. At the same time, we firmly believe that the privacy of end users is central and that we need to do uh, much more through technology, through policy, through standards to ensure that our, all of our personal data is, is protected so that we trust this medium. We need to advance the deployment of core internet infrastructure and evolution of technology to ensure the sustainability of the internet. The internet is changing. As we bring more and more people online, it creates demands upon the technology itself and we need to deploy the latest technologies to ensure that the internet can continue to grow for the next billion users. And finally, underlying all of this is some basic concepts of human rights. We, want, we believe in the rights and the experience of the end user and that this is paramount in everything that we do. So what is internet governance? Um, this is a term that really emerged on the international scene uh, in 2005 at the UN World Summit on the Information Society. They defined internet governance as, it's quite a mouthful, so bear with me, the development and application by governments, the private sector, and civil society in their respective roles of shared principles, norms, rules, decision-making procedures, and programs that shape the evolution and use of the internet. That is quite a definition. 
what that means in, I think, real life is that we believe in cooperation within a decentralized system. The internet is not run by some top-down authority somewhere. It's managed by a lot of different organizations working together in collaboration and cooperation. But you have to recall that in 2005, this was a fairly new concept for the international community. We had new stakeholders that were coming in uh, to the discussion. The technology community, for example, the, the organizations that run country code top-level domain names or that develop standards or that uh, manage regional internet registries and IP addressing, they were not traditionally considered to be part of policy discussions. They were off doing technology where technology happens and policymakers were off doing policy where policy happens. And what this definition started to put in motion was this idea that these things had to come together, that there needed to be intersection between the people who were building the technology and the people who had responsibilities to their public communities for um, safety or for access or for affordability, that these things couldn't just be done separately. In the Internet Society, we refer to this as the Internet Ecosystem. This is a cooperative model of um, involving a large range of actors in open and collaborative processes, um, recognizing that everybody has different roles and responsibilities. And what you see on this um, diagram here is that we have a lot of different parts of the ecosystem that have to work together to solve hard problems. And at its core, that's really what this internet governance model is. You'll hear a lot of words, you'll hear multi-stakeholder, you'll hear internet governance, but if I leave you with one thing, it would be that to solve hard, complex problems in this very complex age, we have to work together. There's no legislative fix that's going to solve cybersecurity. There's no single technical protocol that's going to solve cybersecurity. There's no industry business practice that's just going to take care of everything for us. This really does require collaboration. These are hard things. And that's what the internet model really um, showcases. So when we go about solving hard problems in the internet, what is it that we're trying to preserve? What do we care about the internet? And from our perspective at the Internet Society, when we look at solutions, we look at them through this lens. Does it ensure that the Internet continues to have global reach? Meaning that from wherever I am, I can reach another endpoint elsewhere on the globe. Can it support a wide range of uses, or are we preferencing one use over another? It supports innovation without requiring permission. I don't have to call my operator or my government if I want to put a new application out there and see if it works. We think of Facebook today, but some years ago this was an idea in somebody's mind that, that was launched and it was highly successful. And that person, Mark Zuckerberg, did not have to call his government or his local operator to, to ask if, if he could throw this out there. The internet should be accessible. Anyone, anywhere should be able to connect to it, study it, and build new parts of it. Uh, this is really important, of course, as we try to deal with the new problems. The, those new solutions could come from anywhere on the globe, and the Internet needs to be able to, to accommodate that. The Internet is based on interoperability and mutual agreement. There's nobody that says you have to connect. There's nobody that says you must use this protocol. This is a voluntary agreement, a voluntary arrangement by all of us because we derive value in the connection. I get online because I find value in something that you have. You find value in, in your content reaching me. This is a value exchange, and it's voluntary. Um, and fundamentally, as I've said before, it requires a spirit of collaboration. And ultimately, if you speak to the engineers, these are building blocks. So the, the protocols and the standards build upon each other to create the user experience that we all often take for granted. And it's really important, this idea that there are no permanent favorites. An idea that's great today, that we love and we use all the time, two, five years from now, may or may not be the great idea. Something else may take over. We've seen this over and over and over already in the internet age. And it's really important that public policies and the internet governance ecosystem ensure that new ideas can come to the fore 
And if an idea was good for a time, it can pass away. So in that frame, I think of, this is just a slide that I developed, I think of some, some of the challenges that we face uh, in the internet governance ecosystem. There's a debate about open standards versus closed standards, proprietary versus open, uh, national standards versus global standards. This is all a, a tension and a discussion that's going on. Commercial decisions, are, we're all affected. Are we locked in or do we have freedom of choice? Can we choose uh, different services? Um, how, do we know, do we have any choice in how our personal data is being handled and managed? The security concerns that I think probably everybody knows and thinks about, pervasive surveillance, whether it's government or, or, or industry, cybersecurity programs, how do we manage our own identity online? How do you know who I am and who gets to control who I am and what are the identifiers that make up who I am on the internet? And then the governance structure itself, who's in the room, who's allowed to have a voice, who's at the table? These are all things that are changing and shifting over time. Some of the trends that we see, uh, I think some, many of you, especially our government friends, will, will understand this, and I, I remember this well from being in the government. Um, by the time you, you think you've developed a good government policy, the technology has, has moved on and passed you by. And that's a real challenge for policymakers, of how do you create sustainable policy and good policy for your people that doesn't inhibit the growth of technology, but that can also um, be relevant as the technology changes. Uh, at the global level, the main issue right now is a, a big discussion of what is the role of ICT in sustainable development. So not just ICT from a technology sector point of view, but how does ICT affect education or health? or the environment, and what are the tools for, uh, that ICT can bring to bear to address the challenges of higher education or the challenges of, of medical care in remote communities. The role of emerging economies in the management of the internet, this is a big issue, of course, within the United Nations system, but elsewhere. More and more um, users are coming from developing countries, uh, this is no surprise. And those countries are, are stepping up and taking a stronger role in the management of the internet. New technologies like mobile are expanding access, bringing uh, affordable access to more and more people. This is a great thing. More people online, more expectations of the network. And then I think I've already covered this balance between national security, individual privacy, and online freedoms. And that's a real question. Does there need to be a balance or can you have both? And then for all of us who do internet governance on a regular basis, the number of meetings continues to grow. Uh, it's harder and harder to follow. Um, and all this means is that there's higher and higher levels of attention at higher and higher levels of industry, of government, of civil society in the issues of how we manage the internet. The Internet Governance Forum is a, a global forum that was created at the WISIS back in 2005. Um, to bring stakeholders together, like yourselves, uh, to try to tackle the challenges of the internet in a way that's not a negotiation, it's not a treaty, but rather it's a way to share experiences. And it has really emerged as the premier place to do that kind of engagement and that kind of discussion. And if you get a chance, I encourage you to look at the the workshops that are available and that are, are being posted, um, it's quite a remarkable um, diversity of topics that the Internet Governance Forum is taking hold. And it will be this year, I should say, it will um, take place this year in Brazil in November. So it's uh, in the region, which is very good. But importantly, I think for this group, um, is that the IGF is not just a global event. It has really emerged at the regional and local level as a platform for stakeholders to try to address the very issues that you're going to talk about today, net neutrality or innovation or human rights. How do we as a local community want to address those issues? And local and regional IGFs are emerging as one of the, the main ways to do that. And I think um, it's very exciting to see that uh, approach being used here in the Dominican Republic. And finally, uh, the WISIS uh, was a UN summit, heads of state level in 2005. 
Very typically in a UN summit environment, they often revisit the outcomes of the summit 10 years later to see what progress has been made by the international community, did we meet our goals, and what more needs to be done. So this year, it's 10 years on from the WSIS in 2005. For those of us who were there, it's a little difficult to believe. It's already time to review it. Um, but they will review it, uh, governments and stakeholders at the UN General Assembly in December. A uh, high-level UN event will consider what's happened and what has been the progress made. Um, we believe the primary areas of focus, as I said, will be around sustainable development, the role of ICTs, security, uh, human rights. The Human Rights Council is very involved in these issues. And then what, what more needs to be done? And I think the real question for the Internet Society and others, non-government stakeholders, is to what extent will the governments and the stakeholders at the WSIS review continue to embrace the multi-stakeholder model? Or to what extent will they constrict it? Or will they try to put borders around it? Uh, will we see um, further support and further growth of this model? Or will we see more government uh, intervention as a result of the WSIS? Um, so this is something we're watching very closely. We certainly hope uh, there are plenty of opportunities, I should say, along the way for stakeholders to contribute actually to the final outcome. There will be a call for comments over the next several weeks. Um, I really hope the Dominican Republic, uh, maybe the chapter and others in this room who want to contribute to that will be a part of that. It's the, it's the best way to shape the outcome of the WSIS uh, for the end of this year.